Welcome to One Big Question Today. We're talking about, is testing still a developer job in an AI world? I'm Emily Bates, and I'm here with Kevlin Henney on the Modern Software Engineering channel. This is a series of discussions about big questions like this. So if you'd like to hear more about this kind of thing, do subscribe to the channel and hit like if you enjoy what Kevlin and I are discussing today. So Kevlin, the question is, is testing still a developer's job in an AI world? Give, give me your, your view. Um, yes, there we go. Um, you know, thanks yeah, for, absolutely. Thanks, I, you know, it's been great. Uh, come back for another big question. <laughs> um, I, I think we have more to say on the topic I of, think we might have of testing a little more and, to say. Yeah. and whether developers should be doing it and that kind of thing. I mean, that's the, the first thing. Was testing ever a developer's job? Yeah. And that's, that's the interesting thing is that, that uh, sometimes these questions are not really about uh, a lot of the AI related questions are not actually really about AI. Um, they're about what we are doing and have been doing. And historically, yeah, we've had this, uh, we had this growing adoption, particularly this century of developers now regarding, oh, you know, unit testing and, um, end to end testing. These are within my job remit. Uh, whereas historically there was often a strong separation of like, that's not my job, um, uh, and much stricter. And although that does still exist in a number of quarters, we've seen that kind kind of shift um, quite a lot. Um, but that said, um, the, the, a number of the studies that I've looked at still say that the um, the most common form of testing is not testing. Um, the most common form of developer testing is to not test. Um, and so there is that question. So I think that sometimes people are, that those who are already in the not testing category and those organizations that bias towards that. I'm not going to lay this at individual developers' door. Sometimes it's a, an organizational cultural thing. Those organizations that are doing that, they look at AI as just like, oh, here's a way we can continue to justify us not doing <laughs> tests. Um, right. Here's a new thing that allows us to maintain that that blind spot that we have already got. Um, so I think the, there's, there's, there's but, the question for those organizations. Yeah, but can we just talk about that? Because that's not Usually a good way of doing things. I mean, looking at like the Dora research, I mean, one of the conclusions from the Dora research was that these elite organizations who are really, really effective and, you know, killing it in the marketplace and delivering really good quality stuff really frequently. In those kinds of organizations, it, it clearly they found that developers are responsible for test automation in those organizations. So if, if your developers find that they have, oh, we don't need to do testing, we've got someone else to do that. I, they're not going to be in those elite kind of yeah. really effective orgs. Yeah, I, I think that's that. That is very. That, I mean, that is that is very true. Exactly as you say, the high performing. But also when we start looking out at um, things like defect rates in uh, certain disciplines, um, medical, um, safety critical, and things like that. Uh, th you know, testing is a is a, is not optional at all. And even before you hit the elite, you, people are already kind of like, yeah, testing. How how can you have a CICD pipeline without testing. Well, there's a lot of things that people say, oh, this is our CICD pipeline. Okay, where are your tests? Well, we don't have any. Well, that's not really a CICD pipeline, is it? It's a, certainly a pipeline and it might be a, it might be a kind of, um, it might be a sewage pipeline, but it's certainly not a CICD pipeline. Uh, so you have that issue of, if you want to be in the quality category, testing is and developer testing is not optional. So there, there's a danger. Actually, I just realized when you pointed that out, that some organizations that are in that elite category, they might make a mistake here and say, oh, it's no longer our responsibility. We can get AI to do it for us. And that's actually going to lead to a drop um, for them. It could. It could. Yeah. I mean, I think that we need to talk about what testing is for, of course, in, in the development process and, and why it leads to, to high quality. Because, I mean, it's, it's a well-known assertion that you can't test quality in, yeah. um, you know. The quality comes before that. So the tests are, are actually helping developers to write better code and raise the quality of the work by giving them feedback early and often. And that's what you want the tests for. But now that now with the AI tools, we can actually ask the AI tools to, okay, I've written some code. Can you go and write me the, the test that will give me that feedback? So you might get that feedback um, sooner for if the AI is, mm. is uh, writing the test, maybe. Uh, what what is your Maybe. experience of this? Um, I think th this one comes down again, and this is one of those ones where it says it's the quality of the prompt, um, but it's also knowing what you're asking for. The danger is uh, there's a couple of blind spots that um, 
people fall into, and people fall into this without AI, but uh, there's an amplifier here because of the, uh, uh, with the, the time scales, the ability to speed things up is that what you might get is somebody says, okay, I, let's just say, let's go to, I've written the code as opposed to getting an AI to generate the code. I've written the code. I want you to write tests for it. Now, one of those is that kind of approach or here's the code, write tests for it. Well, the danger here is if we don't know what it's supposed to do, we're just going to test the bugs in. And so therefore, uh, you've, all you've given the LLM is here is some code, write tests for it. And that is a, there's an implicit assumption that it is the code is itself correct. Um, so um, we're going to write something that will give us regression, but it won't give us a, a verification of uh, and validation of our assumptions and uh, our correctness of interpretation. So you can bake that in accidentally. The other is that we describe exactly what it is that we have generated, and here is the code. But uh, again, that's now the quality of the prompt. One of the things that we can often find is that sometimes, you know, sometimes you get lucky. The prompt gives you the right code and therefore give you the right tests, but also it will have blind spots around edge cases and interpretations. But because you've now got a bunch of tests and if they go green, you've got this kind of, yeah, I'm done feeling rather than having understood the test. And I think that's, that's, that's the big issue here. Um, and it goes, as you were saying, there's this idea that it helps developers develop um, and it gives them the feedback but it's also not just feedback and does it work it's feedback as do i understand what is being built and there's a danger here um not everybody's falling into it but some of the numbers seem to suggest a lot of people are falling into it that we've outsourced our understanding it's just like well we're done i have i have got one machine to understand something i've got another machine to generate it I, I, my work here is done and actually we don't understand it we don't know that it's correct we don't know that it does the right thing we don't know about its security so there is a danger here of sleepwalking through greens if you like um because the green gives us that nice little dopamine hit and it's just oh that's fantastic it's all working well, yeah, I mean, this is one of the great things about test during development, that you get these little dopamine hits when, when the tests pass. And if you're getting the, te the, the, the tool, as you say, to write the code and the test, it's like, um, it, 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 if it, did it pass through your brain? I mean, the, 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 the thing with TDD as well, of course, is you try and um, upfront say what it is you want. You're trying to specify what the code should do before you write it. And you can you can do that with an AI as well. You can tell it to write the test first and, and give it a good description of what the thing should test and, and get it to go and do that. But it, it seems to be working against the grain of the way the AI is set up. I, know, I found this when I've been trying to do TDD with these tools, that they, they jump too quickly ahead and they don't do one test at a time. Uh, and I think it's the way that they have been trained because they, they only see the end result. They only see the, the code as it's checked in. They didn't see and learn the process for how that code was created. And if I want it to follow a process, it doesn't have that kind of, in its training of, of how, how to do the engineering, how to do the process. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there, you're right because there is, an, there, is, there is that idea of it is based on states and then transitions to them without actually saying, actually, the transition is the bit where we do a lot of thinking and a lot of understanding and make certain choices. And there's a kind of like a, that part of that feedback is, is, is not just the red green is, do I get it? Do I understand it? And do I know, have I made good decisions here? And can I change those decisions? There's a kind of, um, uh, uh, there's something there that's, that's not in the process of the standard prompt complete approach. In fact, whether the thing you mentioned about the getting it to do what you ask it, I want you to do one test, the whole load of stuff. I, I was just processing a file the other day, nothing to, nothing to do with codes and completely separate. And I explicitly said, you're going to read in, you know, doing some data analysis. Um, I want, here's, here is a, here's a, a whole load of data. I want you to do the following thing. Do not do such and such. So absolutely went ahead and did such and such. Um, and it's just like, you were actually told to not do that. Um, and you went ahead and did that. And so there is this, there's this, we're not even going to talk about the vibe coding. It's gone and deleted your whole repo thing that uh, keeps popping up every now and then on the, uh, you know, bad news on the web. But there is this notion of it's, it's both eager and uncooperative as a, as a, as a pairing partner, which is, is an interesting mix. If it were not eager and uncooperative, then I'll leave it in the corner, but it's sometimes it's a little bit too enthusiastic. Right, right. So bringing this back to the, you know, is what is our job as a developer in an AI world with regard to testing? And, and I kind of feel that, that the, 
we talk now about, you know, it is a developer's job to do testing. That's part of the engineering approach that we have to writing good quality code. We, we need that feedback. And then, and then how do we fit the AI tool into that? And we've been talking about, you know, it's, it makes mistakes. It does stuff that, that humans wouldn't do. So it's, but is, how can we ensure that it's actually helping us? I, I think we're, we're learning so much about how to use these tools at the moment. Have you got anything that actually works? I, well, I would say for that one, I think it's, there's something that I think I've used as a, as a question, regardless of tooling, but any tooling or practice, sometimes it's worth just pausing for a moment and going like, well, wait a minute, what problem are we trying to solve by doing this? And it can be, um, we're going to change programming language. Um, we're going to adopt a new architecture. We are going to adopt an agile development process. We are going to do TDD. We're not going to do TDD. We're going to do whatever. We're going to adopt AI. The, the point is people are doing this, but sometimes you need to ask the question, why? What is the problem? Let's be really specific. What is the problem with what you're doing that you're trying to solve? Or are you just going along because other people are doing it? You know, the, the that uh, uh, that phenomenon of like, you know, the, the crowd follows it. that. Yeah, other people are doing it. I don't want to be left out. And it's convenient. It's really convenient. It's kind of seductive. Yeah, it's fr yeah, it's say, frictionless. Yeah. I've got this code. Go and write me some tests. And I think it was uh, Birgitta Berkeler. I heard her talking about this that, you know, if you've got some really difficult legacy code that hasn't got any unit tests, it's kind of seductive. You, you throw it at uh, the AI tool and it creates a bunch of unit tests. And they're all kind of crappy, brittle tests that won't survive yeah. the first contact with yeah. any refactoring or any change in the code. Yeah. Bec and, and the AI can't do any better than that because the code is designed so badly. Yeah. So there are certain things that, you know, I couldn't do and the AI I can't do either. Yeah. And, th and that's, and that's the thing is I think it, it, it points it, the, the, this, this question and that challenge uh, kind of points the arrow back at us, doesn't it? It's just like, well, what problem are we trying to solve? If, if you, if I've got somebody who says, you know, Actually, I've got a really nice um, testing workflow. Um, we are doing incredibly well. And now we're going to do AI. It's just like, well, <laughs> you're doing really well. What, what is it that you're hoping to do with this tool? Let's take, the word, let's take the word AI out of it and say, what is it that you are hoping for? Magic, miracles, surprises. It's a, it's a tool you can use to explore a number of things. But there is the idea that sometimes, and a lot of organizations seem to be following this kind of, we must be using AI. Yeah, but what, why? What is the thing you're hoping to get? What problem specifically are you trying to solve? So I think, going back to that question, is, is what is it that people are hoping to address? And different organizations and different developers will have needs. You, you highlighted that legacy code question, which is always a thorny one. Um, because that is most of the code in the world, and that is most of what developers are working on. And everybody's hoping for a silver bullet. So there is this desire, and along comes something that is, uh, uh, is you know, in one sense, in one sense, I am always point out that it's just like, well, with LLMs, given that it's just swallowed the whole of the world's data that actually would take an individual human millennia to read, um, given that it's swallowed, you would expect something. So, I mean, <laughs> we are expecting something, and it's impressive, but it's still not a miracle work. It's still a tool it's still constrained by our ability to use it so i think the first thing is that developers need to sit there and go well what is the specific problem that i want to do this with? in what way do i want assistance okay so i have an idea on this because i think what ai tools are actually really good is generating ideas and uh, thinking of things that you might not have you might have overlooked and just being creative i guess and testing testing it as an activity needs that i think so particularly when you've got the system and and you've got to the point where you you're bringing in like exploratory testing and actual testers and the skill that the skill of being a tester is i think being really creative about thinking of things that you've forgotten and and judging risks advocating for what the user is going to want from the software and i think that the and that side of testing, when you're getting to the exploratory stage, it can help you to think of things that you would have you know, missed to test. So I think that it's probably going to augment a skilled tester working yeah. in exploratory phase quite a bit. And I think that's a, a good use of these tools. I, I think that I think that, that is the, and I think that's the, that gets to the the heart when when I talk about this idea of assistance versus outsourcing your role or outsourcing the whole task. Because that, that's the thing that many developers and organizations don't 
seem to be doing. Some do. Um, some are using it as an augmentation. They're using it as assistance. They're using it as a, as a kind of creative, creative adjunct. In other words, they're saying, I've done this. I've done that. What else could I do? Or can you see anything that's missing? Or give me another idea. And I think that even on the generation side, uh, the non-test generation, the main code generation side, that's something that people often miss is they will say, generate me this code. Whereas they're missing the opportunity, generate me three different versions of this. Okay. I want to see what you I want to see the range of thinking and see what I can learn from that. And that's going to give me much better, as it were, binocular vision. You know, I'll be able to see the problem from multiple sides. And that I think is really where the win is. It's not in, I'm, I'm going to outsource writing tests to, um, an LLM. It's I've got some tests, I've got some code. Um, what can I do better? Um, give me some other ideas. What might I have missed? How would you do this? You generate some. I'm not necessarily going to put, I'm not going to commit that, but I want to see what else is happening. And it's that extra perspective, that assistance rather than do my job for me. And I think that's where the win is. And I think, but I don't think that's where most people are going from what I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I think what you're you're talking about goes back to the essence of of engineering in, in uh, Dave's uh, Dave Farley's modern software engineering, he says, you know, engineering is about two big things. It's managing complexity, optimize for learning, and optimize for learning. There is about you know that feedback and getting those creative ideas about um, that the the tool can help with, and managing the complexity. That's about the design and the modularity and the separation of concerns. And and the, the, you, what you want is the the AI tool to augment your ability to to see opportunities to to modularize and to take yeah. smaller steps and and to identify concerns that could be separated and um yeah so I think you you want to get it to augment your engineering skills and not to like you say do the testing for you because yeah that's not really going to help yeah that that's not a problem that's not a problem you know I don't I you know and that's that's that is the issue is that sometimes I think there is that kind of oh testing is boring or and and certainly people do there are tests vary widely in quality but there is that idea of by working with a test you are clarifying your understanding we don't want to outsource the other thing exactly as you've said that there's a management of complexity but also a learning aspect we are acquiring knowledge and we should take every opportunity to do that having something else know something for me is not useful um unless i decide i actually i'm now a manager of ais that's a different thing as opposed to a developer the idea is how can i use this to increase my understanding you know when the internet came along you know, I could search for stuff and this is fantastic. I can find other people who are trying to do stuff and, people, and I'm going to say, no, oh, this is like, okay, old man talking here. Okay. I, this is, but there's that idea of like, isn't this fantastic? There are loads of other people who are, who they'd had the same error. I can match on error codes. There's kind of shared understanding that we can uh, use and we can have whole resources and blogs, all the rest of it. And this is great. I don't sit there and go, oh, I don't want that. But at the same time, I am not, as it were, um, uh, uh, with AI, I can, I can do that, but many people are going like, do my job for you. And they're missing that opportunity. They're missing that, as you say, augmentation to be better engineers, to actually not just say passively, I want to write tests, but the, the point you made there about design, I think is really important because you might also say, what could I do to improve how can I make the test better by changing the code? What what opportunities for modularity would make testing easier and simpler and clearer? And it might show you something that, you know, you probably stay if it's legacy code, you've probably stared at it, uh, uh, you know, every day for however long. You're so used to it that maybe you can't see the new opportunities and your colleagues can't either. So draw on something that doesn't have that bias and that over familiarity. And it may, it may give you an idea, you know, give me five ideas to improve the code that would make testing better. That's where we really want to explore this thing that as uh, you know this this opportunity rather than that kind of seductive kind of like oh this is easy i can just generate tests against this yeah i think this is a really good point to perhaps round off this discussion kevlin because we've we've been talking about is testing still a developer's job in the ai world and i think we both agree it it, it still is um but what we want to be using the ai for is to augment that and make it even better so that we get even better tests and even better design and we can do higher quality software so uh thank you very much yeah thank you everyone and don't forget if you like this give us a like um if you have any other kind of thoughts and suggestions on this top um 
comments below um, and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Kevin.